We began yesterday with Brian Head Welch's story of coming not just to faith in Christ, but the journey since that decision uh, over a decade ago. He left the band to help himself. He went back to help others, and along the way, uh, Brian nearly lost everything. As the co-founder and lead guitarist of the Grammy Award-winning multi-platinum metal band Korn, uh, he's had some incredible experiences, and he's here to share the journey uh, that the Lord has taken him on so far. Good to have you with us, sir. Thank and you. And for anyone who uh, missed yesterday, go back, get on YouTube, and, and watch the first, uh, first part of the story. We're going to pick it up from... You know, your decision to, to leave Corn, uh, you shared a little bit about the things that were going on in your life personally in a 10-year journey that uh, had some really tough times in it and how the Lord ministered to you and to uh, your daughter, Jenea, and yeah. how she's doing well today. But uh, there came a time when you rejoined the band Corn, And so let me ask you this. As a guy who had a come-to-Jesus moment, following the Lord, uh, growing in faith, uh, I would imagine you got a little bit of pushback from, from people in the Christian community saying, how can you go back and join this heavy metal band that, you know, was typified by sex, drugs, and rock and roll, uh, yeah. you know, that kind of helped ruin your life in the first place? What yeah. led you to that decision? Um, you know, I understand them because I pushed back on God. I was like, this has been all 10 years, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I love walking by faith and doing my own thing, brand new, you know, different land like Abraham, you know. Mm -hmm. But then he was, uh, he started moving in my heart that it's time to go back. And it wasn't, it had nothing to do with the money. Like I have royalties, I could sell royalties, it'd be yeah. fine. And yeah. it was about the tribe of people that um, he just, he, he, you know, Jesus just wants them, you know. Mm -hmm. And what happened was I was on tour with my solo project. I was on tour with POD, it's a Christian rock band. Well, they're not. They're Christians in a rock band. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so anyway, they, uh, they, uh, they had a show at a big rock festival. I couldn't play it because my solo band wasn't big enough. And so I just went to go hang out with them. And Korn was actually playing that. It was the first time I'd ever been at a, Korn, a place where Korn's playing since I left. And that was over 10 years. Yeah. Wow. And I, was just, I just went in kind of incognito. And you know, I didn't want to make a big deal. And uh, word got out. And I reconciled with the guys. I had conversations with them. And... I just saw God moving. I was watching bands and watching metal bands getting teary-eyed, you know, because this spirit was on me just going, I love these people, you know, and I want them. And I didn't know what it all meant, but they, the corn asked me to play a song and uh, with them. I played one song on stage, and then it seemed like everybody was in tears, you know, mm -hmm. from from the people in the crowd, people online, to my dad crying the next day because he, he knew these kids when they're, when they're little, you know, it's family. These guys mm -hmm. are family, and so... You know, after a couple of weeks, they asked me to come back. I denied it at first. I was like, you know, thank you, but I'm doing my own thing. And then it just wouldn't leave. Huh. So I got a couple, uh, I, I felt like the Lord just said, said, you know, this is time. And then I, uh, then I got three uh, people who I trusted that gave me counsel. So, mm, wow. So, I mean, and as a result, you said you saw people crying. That's pretty typical now, like when you're going out and you're sharing the gospel because that's what you get a chance to do, actually praying with people at a rock concert. Kind of describe what that's like. It's crazy because <laughs> it's like after the show, you know, I, I, have a, I have an awesome evangelist friend of mine, Robbie Dawkins, and, um, and another friend, Todd White. They, they really helped me uh, just uh, about being bold and going out and letting God work through you. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, um, Robbie Dawkins set up a bunch of people across the country that he knows, along with friends that I know across the country, and, and they meet me at the rock concert. I get wristbands, and we say, God, show us who you want to touch tonight. Mm -hmm. And we go out there and give them wristbands for these people, and you would not believe the stories we hear mm -hmm. about what's going on in their lives. They're like handpicked by God to be there. And if at first, like half of them are going, I do the meet and greet after the show, and I start yeah. talking. Hey guys, how'd you like the show? And then I start talking, and they're like, "Oh, this is what it's about." Yeah, and, and, and it's crazy <laughs> to, to turn from that rock concert party atmosphere to like just life, you know. Yeah, how's, but how's I just your soul? I, I talk about the root of my self hatred <laughs> that I got when I was in mm -hmm. junior high. I carried it to being a rock star. That's this self hatred I had until I found Jesus. He took it away. So many of these people have that, you know, and and that's why they're just medicating and so I just see and you could see their eyes like at first they're like okay what is this and then all of a sudden they're like oh my gosh I'm supposed to be here I need this mm -hmm. you know and not every one of them sometimes I get backlash and 
Um, we had a, a, a homosexual guy the other night that was, he was awesome, but he was like, he was fighting it because he was like, he prayed the prayer, and then afterwards he's whispering, why are they trying to convert me? And then he's talking to another guy, no, I need this. And then he's leaving, like he's just up and down yeah. and up and down. Yeah. And so, yeah, we've, we've drawn all kinds of people, drug addicts, to, uh, to people that were sober um, and they need God's spirit for joy because they've been sober three years, you know, and they just, mm -hmm. they're empty. I could see it on their face. They're just like, yeah. I'm like, no, God, you really need to live. Jesus will make you really want to live and have joy in your face and everything. Mm. And so all, everything from, it's just exciting, you know. Yeah, and, and you've had the opportunity. That, I mean, this has led to you know, really encountering thousands of individuals uh, backstage and at, at the shows and whatnot to have that real one-on-one. -on -one. And you've seen uh, some, some really amazing things. I, I watched a YouTube video. I think it was with Todd White yeah. some time ago. And it was just like, you know, you could tell. This group of people that you know they're backstage with 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 you and and because they're at the corn uh, show and and all of a sudden God's spirit just kind of goes poof and there's words of knowledge and and healings and manifestations of God's power and presence yeah. in that environment. I mean, it's just powerful to watch. I live for that. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm sure you never thought that could be happening backstage at at, at, a, at a corn concert back in the day. No, my gosh, you would, I would have <laughs> said you. You are crazy. Get out of my face. You know, yeah. I'm just like, what is going on? And that I live for that just to see God himself touch people. Yeah. Because when he touches people, it's game over. Like, you know, I could try to convince people and right. persuade them with my story and, and just kindness and loving on them. But when God actually comes and I mean, I had a, a guy and, a, and his wife and her mom was a witch. She had stage four cancer. Mm. And, uh, and so she was there. She was a witch, but she, um, they went out and they uh, they they found her in the crowd. And she's a fallen. She's like, I know God brought me here, and she got saved. And then her her boyfriend was like, after I did the gospel, he came up to my friend and he was just blank eyed. And he said, they said, what's going on? And he said, I don't know. I don't. I've never felt this before in my life. Mm. And he said, that's God. Did you hear the gospel? You know. He's like, yes, I heard it. I didn't pray, but um, you know, I um. I would have put a middle finger in your face yesterday if you would have told me about Jesus, but this, I can't deny this. And he's like, why don't you pray with me right now? And he gave mm -hmm. his life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, it's just wild. Okay, so Brian, I have to ask you this question. What do you say to Christian critics who say, heavy metal music is demonic, and yet you're a part of the band, and you're a Christian, you get off the stage, and you go and you witness to people. How can they, how do you reconcile the two? Because I know you have, you have critics who think, you know, you can't be a part of both, you, that you cannot do both. Um, I will say uh, you, can't, you can't understand it all from sitting on your couch and, okay. and watching it, but I would say this, and I understand, like, why they would, they, they would question. I don't like the mean ones, okay. but the ones that question, yes. totally cool. Because uh -huh. um, I questioned it, too. I was like, I'm doing this other thing, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't want to go sing songs about this you know, this way I used to be. And so, uh, but the thing is, God wants me there and he, he handpicked me and he anointed me to be there. You know what's crazy? I've noticed, we go on some crazy tours sometimes and we're not, you know, corn's still big, but sometimes we open for bands that are bigger because, you know, times change and everything. Yeah. And so um, it seems like the darker the tour we go on, the more God will show up and show off. Mm. That he's just like, I'm not, he's not scared of it. He's not afraid. And, and he just, it seems like his, his miraculous works more powerfully when the, when yeah. the, when, when the darker the atmosphere. Yeah. Hey, I got to ask you real quick, uh, cause we only got just a minute left. I'll cover here and I can see in real life, you got uh, some Hebrew writing there uh, as part of the uh, ink on your, your eyelids. What does that say? Um, it's uh, I got Shekinah and Kabod and that's the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And, uh, just like the uh, Kabod's like the weighty presence of God and, uh, and Shekinah's like the sweet, uh, just resting presence of the Holy Spirit. So I studied it and um, I know I'm a little odd, but uh, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they, when they had encounters, they would make uh, altars in remembrance of that encounter. I get tattoos. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that for another discussion. Thank you so much for spending the time with us both yesterday and today, Brian. Uh, the book is With My Eyes Wide Open. 
apparent, not apparently, but a critically acclaimed, highly acclaimed, and uh, very transparent look at how God's been moving through the life of Brian Head Welch. To pick up a copy, you can connect with Brian at brianheadwelch.net or go to our website, harvest-tv.com. Find an easy way to link back to his site from there. Coming up later, discover how you can help spread the word with we'll see broadcasting.